Hello and welcome to our Analyst Notebook iBase Tips and Tricks video to accompany our fourth newsletter. We'll be looking at list items in Analyst Notebook and how to create a new icon to use in iBase. First of all, let's start with list items. So list items is available on the Analyze tab under List Items or Function F11. And when you open it, it provides a sorted list of records that allows you to gain a quick overview of your chart and it's particularly useful on larger charts where you have data stored in properties that are not easily visible on the chart itself. Here we're looking at the entities on the chart with this tab here and if you want to look at the links we click on the links tab to see those. So back on entities let's say I want to produce a list of the people on the chart for someone else. I can try and sort by entity type, for example, but as you can see here, the females and the males are separated just because we happen to have house in the middle. So I'm going to sort by a different column, semantic type, and now here we have all our people together. Now if I'd like to take a copy of this information through to, let's say, Excel, I can select the ones I want. So we'll click on the first female, and then we'll use a shift key to click on the last person. And then over on the right, we click copy, and this is then sitting on the Windows clipboard. I'm just going to go and open Excel, and then we can paste it into Excel. And there you can see all the data has been taken through. And I can now do whatever I like with it, as usual, using Excel. Now I might also wish to take this list of people and filter. So I've got a filter button over here, and when I press it, it gets rid of everything else. Now let's say I don't want one of those people in the list. Let's say Ivy Brown. So I'm going to select her and delete her. She's now no longer in the list. Now, when I click OK, it says, would I actually like to delete the items from the chart? Now, of course, it's saying 9 because a load of links have gone as well. Now, actually, I don't want to delete them from the chart too, but you can delete from list items and also be deleting from the chart. Now you can also control which properties you see in list items. It's normally the main properties, which will be things like the label, identity, the types, dates and times, and then most of the rest will be the attributes that happen to be on the chart. But I can add extra columns in should I wish to. So I'm going to click columns, now hopefully you know analysis attributes have extra information about the items on the chart. So as an example, I might like to be able to see how many links each item has. So I'm going to go and find the analysis attribute, entity links. And when I click OK, it will appear over on the right hand side. So I've added in entity links. Now it might be more useful if this information was over on the left hand side. So I can start to reorder these by dragging them across. Now, because there's a lot of attributes on this chart, it's going to take me a few goes to get it right the way over. But basically, I'd quite like it to be near the labels of these items. So now I can see the entity with the most links on the chart happens to be a phone. But the next one down is my guy, Vidal Picard, who has eight links on the chart. That might be the sort of thing I'm interested in. And if I select him in list items and click OK, I can see there he is on the chart. And indeed, he does have that many links. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful for list items. Now let's move over to iBase. Now we often get asked if you can make your own icons for use in iBase, and the answer is yes, and this is how you can do it. First thing you need to know is I've already created the image, so I'm just going to bring up that image so as you can see it. I've called it iBase Test, and all it is is a a, a square with a line through it so we can recognize it. Now the first important thing to know is where this image is. So if I just click at the top here you'll see it's commonly placed in this path. So it's normally under C, Users and then your login name, Documents, I2, I2 Shared, Custom Images, Screens, Icons. Bit of a mouthful. So if you'd rather Grab hold of the PDF of the newsletter from our website and download it, and that path's in there as well. So I've saved the image to that location, and I want to make a note of its name. 
iBase test, no spaces. That's important. Okay, now if you want any more information about how to save images, Analyst Notebook help can be good there. But broadly speaking, I've just created an image, 100 pixels by 100 pixels, and I'm just going to see how iBase handles that. So having created the image and put it in the right place, I now need to tell iBase that this icon exists. Now, the easiest way to find out and understand how images are controlled is to go into iBase, go to the Tools menu, and go to Options. Go to the Advanced tab, and you'll see down here the icon list file path and the name of the file I'm using. So it's worth making a note sometimes of this path name. I'm just going to click on the little Browse button, and what you'll see over here is we have a number of icon lists available, and we'll have a look at one. I happen to be using the Analyst Notebook standard icon list. So if I right click on it and say I'm going to edit it, it's going to open it up in Notepad. And you can see how it works. So each icon that's available in iBase is defined in the following way. The first thing you'll see is the name as it appears in iBase. Then we've got a tab and then the name of the file itself and this repeats all the way down. Here's a good example of a difference. So we have in iBase an icon called Airplane, but it's actually saved on the file system with a different spelling. That's what the file's called, that's what we'll see inside iBase. Now I quite like it to be in alphabetical order, and I'm going to create an icon called iBase Test. So I'm going to scroll down to where I'd like it to be, and I want it to appear as iBase space test. That's how I'd like iBase to see it. Tab, but the actual file is called iBase test with no space. Now, I'm going to do a save as, because I don't want to mess this up. You might prefer to do the backup first, but I'm going to do a save as, and I'm going to call this version 3. As you can probably see from my filing system, I've done this a few times before. Okay, now I need iBase to know about this, and I need to be able to use it in a code list so that users can grab hold of it. If I click on the little Browse button, I can pick it and say I'm using version 3. OK. Now, note what it's saying here. This new setting won't take effect immediately. I'll have to restart iBase. But as it happens, I'm going to have to go into iBase Designer anyway to put it in a code list. So I'm going to come out of this database and iBase itself. And I'm then going to go into Designer. I'm going to open up my database. So you may be getting your colleagues to do this if you're not an iBase designer. OK. I've created an entity type which I've called Newsletter Example. And in it is a field called icon list, which is of type icon. This basically means it will be able to change the icon used for each record as I create it by using the icon list. The code list itself is called icon list example. Now I need to update that. So now that we know what it's called, I'm going to go to code lists, icon lists, pick up icon list example and edit it. And you can see it's already got three things on there. I've got an account entity, a black circle, and a blue circle. It doesn't really matter what they are for the purpose of this. I'm now, though, going to go and find my iBase test entity and move it over. Click OK, and that's now done. I'm going to close the database in Designer, open it up in iBase itself, I'm going to go and create a new entity, record, called my newsletter example. And you'll see in here I've now got my icon list where I can choose my new one. And when I hit save, there it is being used. 
So I've created myself a new icon, which is then being used in an icon list. So when I add data to my database, I can pick the appropriate one. Now in the iBase Administration Centre, which again designers have access to, it'll give you more information about what else you may need to do. I need to make that text file available to everyone using the database and they will need a copy of this icon file or to be able to access it in some way. The simplest thing to do is to make sure that everybody points at the same text file, which you can do by copying and pasting round or put it on a network drive, and that they all have a copy of the icon, which is easiest done again by copying it round so everyone's sharing it. If by any chance iBase does not find the appropriate icon on someone's machine, it'll show a default circle. If you found the video useful, like, share, comment, give us some feedback if you think they're useful. You might like to give us some feedback about other tips and tricks you might be looking for and we can build them into our later newsletters. And if you'd like to access our newsletter online, just visit our website at Shortest Path Training and then download your own copy of the PDF. If you'd like access to the newsletter and have it emailed out on a regular basis, then again do get in touch with us, let us know and we can put you on our mailing list. Okay, thanks for your time. Bye.